Hello everyone, today I'll be telling you my first impressions for Speed 3 Grand Prix. I roughly played about four and a half hours on the Xbox One, although the game stats didn't track hours for some reason. Total of what I did play, I know I spent hours playing it due to playing the various tournaments in the game. Speed 3 Grand Prix is also available on the PS4 and Switch. If you're not interested in playing on the Xbox One, you have those options available to you. I'd like to thank the developer and publisher Lion Castle Entertainment as well as the other publisher GS2 Games Inc. for sending me the game to stream and provide my impressions. The premise from Lion Castle Entertainment's website is as follows. Explosive high speed arcade racing action. Get on the circuit and show that you're the best driver of all time. Pick your favorite track racing car and make your way to the first spot in all seasons to claim the championship title. Drive recklessly to take down the competition and let them all bite your dust. Lead the pack all around the world. Make them all know you're the one leading the pack. Fuel the rivalry as you take it up against others to conquer the world of circuit racing. Race through the American wastelands, tear up the asphalt of the German circuit, compete in British countryside, and drift through the neon-filled streets of Tokyo. My one and only positive thing to say about this game is that the cars drive perfectly fine. It's an easy pickup if you're interested in playing with a friend or something for some nice local co-op fun in a low budget race. With that being said though, I have many issues with this game as you can obviously see from the gameplay I'm running right now. But number one, the UI or menus should be redone as you don't have a choice of what tournament to play nor get the control scheme of the controller at all, so you just have to play the game from previous knowledge that the triggers are accelerate and brakes as I didn't even realize that A was a drifting button, or an e-brake rather, as none of the maps are suited for such a movement of the car and you'll end up smacking to the side or end up crashing yourself trying to do the drift and whatnot. For number two, the tournaments were made stupidly as you just end up playing two laps first of practicing the map, which is unnecessary and should be limited to one lap as you'll be doing the course for three laps on the rookie season, five laps on the pro season, seven laps on the epic season, and the last season I have yet to have played has 14 laps on the legendary season. Number three, the devs decide to make the epic season have you drive courses regularly for one wave that includes the two practice laps for each course but also when you finish the last course you have to redo all the courses again but in the reverse version of the maps which I'd like to know who thought that was such a great idea unless you were extremely lazy with the game and just thought oh just make him go in reverse and it's like okay I'd rather not because that's even more time spent especially because it's seven laps on epic so on legendary i'm sure it's even worse i never tried i just purposely wanted to see how the laps how many laps i had to do on legendary which was 14 so doing it in reverse i got no time for that anytime soon maybe at some point just for the achievement but that's it <laughs> number four is lastly about tournaments that since you don't get a choice of what tournaments to play you have to go to the options in order to reset that progress completely which is just another terrible design choice that there are so many racing games out there that provide better tournaments to play especially something like Mario Kart that they could have just went based on to just have cycles of uh, the different courses instead of just doing every single course in a row so, which is really stupid. Number five, the issue I want to talk about now is the AI should be known where they are all so stupid, where you don't have to worry about them being a challenge at all, as they will just crash into each other because they are synchronized for their acceleration and braking. So, which may sound great, but when you visually see them, you see them just immediately explode when they're way too close to each other from the speed impacts alone when you're just having to do a simple u-turn and they all immediately just drive right into the corner or whatever and since we're all driving f1 cars it is very easy to push into them and make their vehicle drive into a wall taking them down number six the crash text that shows up in game does not show up all the time in fact it shows up 50 50 
percent of the time depend most likely depending on the course because some courses it did show up a, a lot but most of the time it was a 50 50 chance of when your car got destroyed it was just literally a slow-mo waiting for your vehicle to uh, respawn so that text should really be every single time and not just 50 50 chance so i just wanted to make that clear number seven this isn't really a con but i would find it surprising that you're able to drive still when you lose a front tire as you're still able to turn just fine as if you're driving on two front tires although when you lose a rear tire the car does end up sliding in the rear a bit on turns but beyond that it's still plenty drivable number eight the music for the game is pretty random, as is for most racing games that don't get much licensed music by bands, but the start menu screen sounds like you're about to play some shooter game like Doom. But then it just shuffles uh, to a bunch of different electronic music, whether you're in the menus or driving a race. Number nine, I am surprised that there's no clear way to choose how many laps you want to drive in a quick race as you only have difficulty ratings like easy, medium, hard, etc. So you are stuck with a default of three laps on easy as the minimum amount to drive and only increases from there. Number 10, the game really needs online public and private multiplayer but they only support split screen at the moment as I've said before which sucks as this game isn't bad when you just want to have some fun racing with a friend that won't be crashing into everything like the AIs are. Number 11, I don't understand why this game isn't $10 or less across all platforms as the PS4 and Xbox One are both $30 on their site while the Nintendo Switch for some reason is $40 on Nintendo site and this is definitely no $30 to $40 game title that is for sure but currently prices seem to be all over the place currently in November 2020 as it is currently Black Friday season. I personally would have just wanted to play this game on the Switch for a simple 3D F1 racing game to pick up and play it whenever I wanted, especially as I would never t touch the tournaments mode unless you have many hours to spare for just one, otherwise there's no reason to touch the mode. What made me request the Xbox port though for the game was the Xbox achievements, as the devs didn't even make them hard at all as say crashing 100 times or crashing targets 250 times as the achievements for the tournaments only require you to complete them and that's it so if you for some reason want to be last place then you can as long as you have complete every course in the mode then you'll get the achievements i do personally believe that every port of the game is coming from the switch port because the game has frame drop terribly whenever there's too many explosions happening in the map even if you're not looking at them which shouldn't be happening at all on even the base model ps4 or my base model xbox one and i'm, I'm sure it wouldn't matter if i played the game on the xbox one x i know for a fact that both systems should be plenty powerful enough to run the game smoothly but because they're running a game that was designed for an overclocked tablet the game can't perform any better. With all that said, I do suggest not buying this game until you can find it around $10, as it is not worth any more than that, as it is just a very lazy made game that I'd give a 2 out of 5, as the only enjoyment is the quick race and timed race modes for playing alone, but if you have a buddy, then play split screen and that's it and with that said i hope you all enjoy this video about my first impressions on speed 3 grand prix if you haven't already 
done so be sure to leave a like on this video if you have enjoyed subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a video as i try to make videos available nearly every day along with checking out my various links in the description like my twitch stream page and my social media links for twitter and discord server and i will see you all next time bye for now